Tucker Carlson has been downplaying the threat posed by leaders in Congress or Congress people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, believing in far right conspiracy theories and also advocating for violence against their political opponents. Now his argument really revolves around this idea that the United States doesn't have a violence problem tied to white supremacists. And he elaborates on that in this next video, let's take a look. This freshman member of Congress is now the kind of touchstone for the nation. It may be inflating her importance beyond what's warranted, I'm just guessing. Yeah, I'll say, I mean, there is not the slightest evidence that she has any any influence of any kind within the Republican caucus. If you're if you're in the Republican Party uh, and you've got a, uh, somebody who's way out there in, in your midst, you're going to hear a lot about that person and you're going to be asked to account for her and you're going to be have her face, her name and face thrown at you uh, again and again by the media. That's the way the game is played in Washington. The truth is, this has been true for as long as I can remember, Tucker, Republican operate in a media climate that is hostile to them and you have a choice you can rail against it which many do and sometimes you know we in the media do we in one part of the media uh, or you can try to adjust to it uh, Republicans usually do a little of both yeah I just think that every Republican lawmaker who wants to protect his voters should write on a card three words to respond with to reporters who ask about stuff like this buzz off shill because that's exactly what they are they're shills just my view. Well, <laughs> Probably if you do not the, yours. Yeah, I, the problem. With it. What what was that? Wow, that that'll really show them. Uh, I, that was oh, that was embarrassing. Into dust. Anyway, um, yeah. Uh, she, so she she doesn't have any power. Like why why are the Democrats pretending he that she is really important? She has no power. She just apparently cannot be criticized at all costs by the entirety of Republican leadership in the House. They are terrified at the prospect of having to go in terms of an actual vote, go on the record whether you support her or don't support her. But she doesn't have any power, what's the difference? Why not just do it? I mean, we know. Look, Anna, I, we, we talk about people in right wing media, including Tucker Carlson, and sometimes it just gets so annoying because like we're supposed to craft an argument and sometimes we feel the inclination to go back and find a bunch of things that Tucker Carlson said that directly undercut what he's saying right now. And sometimes it's just it's too tiring because I would hope that anyone watching this knows that he is fundamentally not operating in good faith. That is to his core what he is. He knows exactly how big QAnon has become. She literally believes in it and was elected to Congress. That matters, that objectively matters. And, and let alone all of the other things that she's said. So it's just sometimes so deeply frustrating to have to engage in a serious way with a person who doesn't really care about any of this. Sure, he believes stuff and he says stuff, but he's so wealthy that it's all really at arm's length anyway. It just gets really sickening after a while. It does get sickening, um, but it's it's important to, Look, I, I think it's important to like really drive home the point that people like Tucker Carlson are not good faith actors. They have no interests that in any way agree with or coincide with what progressives want. All of his arguments regarding censorship are self serving. And also, I mean, he on a consistent, like very consistently, he goes out of his way to deny what the facts on the ground are, what the reality of the Republican Party has become, what the culture is dismissive of and accepting of. For instance, Marjorie Taylor Greene, I'm gonna say this every single time we mention her because she's not just some you know, uh, typical right winger who wants deregulation and tax cuts. I mean, that's bad enough, but she is called school shootings, false flag operations meant to take Americans guns away. That's what Alex Jones, by the way, has been sued for. Okay, she's a female version of Alex Jones in the House of Representatives. She's advocated for executing Nancy Pelosi for alleged treason. Treason for what treason? What are you talking? The treason that's been taking place is, you know, the nonstop messaging from the right wing meant to incite violence in an attempt to overturn the results of our election. 
That goes against our constitution, it goes against our country, it goes against everything we believe. Um, she's also said, I mean, the, the Jewish laser beam thing, uh, and she mentions the Rothschild. I mean, it, again, Alex Jones in a female body in the House of Representatives. And when it comes to Tucker Carlson, not exactly the most honest actor because he has denied all sorts of things that are actually a pretty big problem in the country right now. Here's a compilation video showing you exactly what I'm talking about. White nationalism, let's be literal for a minute. What is that exactly? White supremacy, that's the problem. This is a hoax, just like the Russia hoax. It's a conspiracy theory used to divide the country. There are probably about as many legitimate white nationalists in America as there are Russian spies. But the whole thing is a lie. If you were to assemble a list, a hierarchy of concerns or problems this country faces. Where would white supremacy be on the list? Right up there with Russia, probably. You could live your entire life here without running into a white nationalist. White supremacy, you know, I've lived here 50 years. I've never met anybody, not one person who ascribes to white supremacy. I don't, I don't know a single person who thinks that's a good idea. I, don't, I mean, they're making this up. None of these dumb people pause even for a second to explain to you what a white nationalist is. You probably still don't know, and honestly, neither do we. And that's because there are so very few of them in this country. In the hands of democratic politicians, climate change is like systemic racism in the sky. You can't see it, but rest assured it's everywhere and it's deadly. And like systemic racism, it is your fault. It's actually not a real problem in America. The combined membership of every white supremacist organization in this country would they be able to fit inside a college football stadium? Well, when you're a white supremacist, maybe you have a difficult time identifying other white supremacists. I don't know, but Tucker Carlson mm -hmm. is clearly someone who has carried water for white supremacists in the country. And John, real quick before you jump in, I just want to remind everyone of what the Trump administration began with in Charlottesville. This video is graphic, but remember in the lead up to what we're about to show you, you have white men holding tiki torches chanting the Jews will not replace us. And it all culminated with this. Counter protester Heather Heyer died that day after a white supremacist ran over her with his car. Um, so white supremacy uh, continued to grow in the country after that. And we saw quite a bit of it in the Capitol riots. Uh, so to deny that this is a thing, I mean, you had a guy wearing a pro Auschwitz sweater at the riots. No, I'm sure, I'm sure white supremacy, uh, you know, anti-Semitism, all of these awful things that really do exist in this country don't exist at all, according to Tucker Carlson, who's a white supremacist. Yeah, and this is the evolution of him denying that racism exists, which is just a crazy thing to even say in a conversation like this. But they will, and they don't actually believe it, obviously. They know that there are plenty of people who are animated by either personal bigotry and racial animus. They understand the laws, they've, they know this, they know this. He does not operate in good faith. That's it, that's the answer to virtually every question about Tucker Carlson. He is not a person that we have honest disagreements with. He is not a person who is just assembling the best evidence available and then making the case for policies that might be contrary to my goals. That's that's not what, what is happening at all. We can maybe disagree about what the end goal of his political philosophy is, kind of. I think you'd have to be kind of dense to disagree, but you could do that. In terms of whether he is an, an honest person that we can engage with, let alone actually work with, no, no, you would have to be so stupid or so dishonest to, to say that that's a thing that should be done. He is a liar. He is a very, very well paid liar and that's the end of it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.